What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbies. And today I wanna to give you a tour of my home theater. It's been quite a while since I've done a tour and there have been some updates since the last time I showed off my home theater. Now, I'm very happy to have the theater that I have. It's a compromise in a few ways and I'm gonna talk about that because it's not a traditional home theater. It's not in the basement. I don't have any elevated seating at this time, um, but it is my room. I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm truly blessed and truly thankful. But I'm putting together this video. One reason is just to kind of show you at this stage in the game what my theater is about because there's probably gonna be some updates pretty soon that I'm excited about. But um, also to encourage those of you out there that may have a room that's not traditional, right? There are certain compromises you might have to make, but you can still have a good experience. And that's one of the things that I've learned about this room and about having this room is I can still have a great experience, even though even the shape and setup is not quite ideal. So speaking of shape and setup, this room is basically a backwards L. Behind me back there, um, well, first of all, this is the room over the garage. Make sure I say that. It's the room over the garage, and so that affords uh, some things, right? So behind me, that's where my theater setup is. Over there is where I shoot the home theater hobbies videos, and right here, this wall behind the camera, um, along this wall, is the computer that I use to edit. So that's kind of the layout of this room. Um, but the reason why this room is laid out like this, I tried a few different layouts when we first bought the place, but this is the layout that I set it on because I wanted a certain speaker configuration. Previously in our old house, I had a little small bedroom that I was using and I had a 5.1 setup and I really wanted rear speakers because I wanted some rear surrounds because back then it was, you know, 7.1, not Atmos. Well, so I decided to go 7.1 and now I have an Atmos setup. I've got 7.1.2 and the two speakers are the speakers over there, that little black one hanging up on the wall. And then there's another black one like right there on the wall as well. And those are Energy Take classic speakers. Now that's kind of the first compromise I wanna talk about. As you can see, the ceiling goes like this behind me because that's the roof. Again, this is the room above the garage. And I went up in the attic above me, but it literally keeps going. So there's no space to really space out two speakers for Dolby Atmos. So I had to compromise and put the speakers up there against basically on the walls that's you know facing outside of the house and it does work for an atmos presentation which i was extremely happy about because i was concerned I was like is this really gonna work it does work and one of the reasons why it works is because again it's overhead enough so you do feel like it's overhead but it's also you know on the left and the right of you so it's actually an atmos effect it's not the voice of god channel that um i think oro uses and things like that it is dolby atmos left and right remember if you do want to make atmos speakers you want to make sure that the speakers are basically kind of outside of the seating position and that gives me that in this room so that's sort of the first compromise i made now well, it's really not the first, it's really the second, but uh, the other compromise I made is with the seating position in this room. Like I said, this room is L-shaped and my seats are basically right there in the middle of the room. And acoustically, that's not the best place to put them, but again, I put them there so that I could do rear speakers. Right here, I have my Klipsch RP150M, and then over there is another Klipsch RP150M. And again, the point is so I could get rear speakers behind my seating position, but not so far away that I have to really turn them up to have the effect. And with these clips right here, you know, basically about three feet or so, maybe two feet from my listening position, I have a nice rear sound stage. Now, the other thing I have going on is I have surround speakers. Right now, I'm actually trying out, or I guess I've had them for a little while now, but some Klipsch RP240S, I think is the right uh, model number for those speakers, but those are surround speakers. Before that, I had some Klipsch RP150Ms, the same speaker that I have here, and I still have those speakers, but I wanted to try out a surround speaker. And so um, I've been trying that out, like I say, for a while, and if you really wanna see a video about that, drop me a comment in the comment section below, and maybe I'll put uh, together some sort of video about you using surround speakers in you know, the age of Atmos and when you don't have a rear wall, you know, kind of close to help bounce off the sound. But anyways, so I'm trying that out and for the most part, it actually does work. But anyway, so I've got a surround speaker there and then over there inside that bookcase is another surround speaker. And again, I used to, or I have bookshelf speakers that I put there, but that's kind of what I use right now. So that's the overall setup. And back there, you can see the TVs on 
well, that's where the TV is along with the front sound stage. You can also see, I guess from this shot, you can see the acoustic treatment that I've also put up on the ceiling, again, to help treat this room. And I've kind of got some, you know, in different areas of the room to kind of help bring down a bit of the echo. But um, let's go ahead, let's look at the front sound stage. I'm gonna show you some of the equipment that I have and sort of what I'm doing right now. And I'm looking to change really, really soon. So let's move on, let's go to the front sound stage. Okay, so here I am at the front of my theater. And like I said, this theater is not just my home theater, but it's also the place where I test different products for this channel. So I'm going to talk about the stuff that I have that's mine here, but I'm also gonna talk about some stuff that I have up here that is in for a review. So let's start off with the stuff that is mine. These speakers, these clips, RP260F on my floor standing left and right channels. They're from the reference premiere line. And I think around 2015 is when clips release these along with the 440C, the center channel. I like the center channel um, right there. The TV is a TCL six figures from 20, 2018. It's a 55 inch. Um, I like it, but hopefully I'm going to upgrade that soon. Right here is the Panasonic UB820 4K USD Blu-ray player. Love that great Blu-ray player. Uh, and those are just a couple movies up there. Right here is the Denon AVR-X 4400H. I use this as my AV receiver and also as a processor. I'm using two channels of amplification off of this to power those Dolby Atmos speakers that I mentioned earlier. And the rest I'm powering with the Mono Price Monolith 7 channel amplifier is sitting over there. And this is the processor that I send over there. Now, let's talk about why I have that over there. I bought this TV stand, I like it, it's a Z-Line, and I like it because I can mount my TV up there, and I have a center channel just under it, along with my equipment just under that. But the issue with it is uh, the shelves are glass, and they have a weight limit of 65 pounds. My mono price amplifier weighs like 90 pounds, so it just it can't sit here. So I kind of have to run wires from here to over there, and it's kind of a rat's nest behind there. I really don't like the way it looks back there, but that's just the way it is. So I'm hoping to get a new entertainment system soon. And so I can kind of put everything in one cabinet and just sort of route everything a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner than I have right now. But that's the way it's set up here. Now, um, this carpet that I'm sitting on, it's here because it is higher, it's hiding some speaker wire that runs under the carpet, under the chairs and goes to those rear speakers back there. So that's kind of how that's set up. Um, and my subwoofer, I haven't talked about subwoofer yet. So typically I have my Super Search VTF-2 MK5 right here, but right now um, I just finished testing and releasing, I published a video about a week ago of these two subwoofers here, the Earthquake Sound Mini Me DSP P15s. So definitely go check that out, find out how I feel about them. But I haven't moved these out of the way and put my Super Search back in its spot. So that's why the subwoofer is not there, but that is still my subwoofer. I also have an SVS SPP 1000 that I keep in the back corner that I use sort of because that's the second best place in this room. I have a nice dual balance setup, so I do like that. Um, I also have these Polk T15s here. These are up here because I'm reviewing them, but I'm also reviewing this box right behind me. Um, this is the Cambridge Audio Evo 150. So I just kind of have these up here just so just because it's just easier to have them up here while I was doing some testing. This isn't the normal setup, but those are the things that I have up here and that's what I'm testing. I think I've kind of talked about everything up here. Like I said, I've got that power amplifier over there and this is kind of kind of the connectivity. There's a rat's nest back there. Oh yeah, over here, just, just behind me is an Apple TV 4K, but otherwise that's the entertainment side. Those are the speakers. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the seating. Editor Cody here. Before I move on and talk about seating, I realized that I forgot something major in my home theater. I upgraded something this year, or not even upgraded, I added something this year that I've never had, and that is a front projection screen. I bought an Elite Screen uh, Yardmaster 2. It's an outdoor portable front projection screen, but it also works indoors, and it really works for my room, because as you saw from my front soundstage, it's constrained in a lot of different areas. It's got the roof coming in, I've got my speakers in a certain configuration, and the Yardmaster 2 actually fits. I was only able to get the 100 inch version. I really wanted something bigger, but honestly, I can't complain because it actually, I just set it up, it sets up in just a few minutes and I have a true 
home theater experience with the projected image. I love it. It is a great family and I really, really do enjoy it. So I just wanted to mention that because that is a big upgrade. I truly can say I have a home theater above my garage with that particular screen, but let's go ahead, let's move on and let's talk about seating. So here we are in my home theater seats. This is the king chair, the main listening position. And these are the uh, Tuscanies from Valencia Home Theater seating. Now, prior to these seats, I was actually sitting on a futon, like a college futon, and it was a bit uncomfortable. But my general thought was, you know, I'm gonna get all my gear and eventually I'll upgrade the seats. And I'd actually started looking into some different, you know, home theater chairs and stuff like that at local furniture stores and stuff like that. But uh, Valencia actually sent me these chairs for review and they are fantastic. And actually they let me keep this pair. So thank you Valencia Home Theater Seating. If you want to find out more about these chairs, I'll definitely put a link to the review um, down below. And also, um, yeah, this is just a big upgrade. So that's, that's all I'm gonna say about this. This is a big upgrade. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my theater. This is it. Um, but the biggest upgrade I would say for any room like this that might be a little less than traditional, a little less than ideal, is acoustic treatment. Yes, your AV receiver has room correction built in and it's been better and it is better than ever, right? Room correction is really good. But acoustic treatment makes a huge, huge difference. Carpet, things on the walls, all of that. And I know you might be saying, well, you know, spousal acceptance factor with things on the wall, spend a little bit more money if you have to, to get something that looks good and also works as an acoustic treatment because it definitely will make your room better even after you room correct it. It'll be even better, right? So you want the best experience ever. So yes, this is not an ideal room, but I have made it my own. It works and it's going to continue working for many years to come. Or, you know, unless we decide to, you know, buy a house and build a basement or something like that, then that'll be even fun, more fun, I guess. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that subscription button and give us a like. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.